Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the presidential party led by His Excellency the President of the Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency Paul Kagame. Thank you very much. Uh, you may be seated. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, President Paul Kagame. Uh, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. Uh, Your Excellency, the President of Burkina Faso, President Blaise Compaoré. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Gabon, President Ali Bongo Ondimba. Your Excellency, the President of South Sudan, President Salva Kiir Merdet. Your Excellency, the President of Kenya, President Uru Kenyatta. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Mali, President Ibrahim Bubaka Keita. Uh, ministers, ambassadors, CEOs, other senior leaders, distinguished guests, delegates, and all protocols observed. A very, very warm welcome to you all, and uh, thank you for joining us today uh, for day two of the Transform Africa Summit 2013. Um, we, uh, we welcome with uh, very warm hands the leadership that's on the stage here today. We thank you for your presence at this important summit, and uh, I think we all appreciate that uh, your presence here goes to signal the importance of this occasion and the role that ICT will play in the lives of our people across the region. So thank you very much indeed, Your Excellencies, for being with us today, and welcome to you. Uh, to all of us, a very warm welcome to day two uh, of this Transform Africa Summit 2013. Yet another day and another opportunity for us to continue this conversation on connectivity and uh, the use of ICT technologies to literally uh, transform our continent for the benefit of all of our people. Uh, we had a, an important day one yesterday, and just to recap uh, some of the things that were said, uh, we heard about the Africa Connect Summit 2007 and the goals that were set at that gathering right here in Kigali. Uh, we heard about the progress that uh, has been made in achieving some of those goals. And also, I guess, uh, we had to have a, a sober moment to, to, rem to think about the challenges that remain uh, and that need to be overcome, uh, which would require a new plan and a new vision. And I think this is part of the conversation that we're having today. Uh, our panels uh, interrogated the ICT landscape uh, and the impact that it was having on our people's lives. Uh, we were inspired as well when we paused to look at the future that is possible for us uh, if we embrace broadband and use it as a vehicle for change. Uh, we heard that it's Africa's time and that we must create the future with desire, with confidence. Uh, we are an attractive destination for real investment and in many respects, we should also be leading the way in terms of innovative practice, not just for the continent, but for the world as well. Um, as a vehicle for the future, we were introduced to the Smart Africa Manifesto, uh, a blueprint of how ICTs can and will tackle our development challenges. Our panelists spoke on how we could uh, make this a living document and uh, that we can and must all commit to it in our various capacities if we are to make meaningful transformation uh, on our continent. Uh, working together in partnerships as we embrace a new kind of thinking, a new way of doing things, uh, with visionary leadership, we would see uh, a career-style success on our shores. 
So today we continue with that conversation, ladies and gentlemen, and as you've seen, we are privileged to have some of that visionary leadership uh, that we need. Uh, and again, having our excellencies here, I really think um, it points to the idea uh, that this kind of movement can only be driven from the highest levels. And we certainly look forward to hearing your thoughts a little later, your excellencies, on this uh, very important topic. Right now, though, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to uh, welcome uh, the Minister of Youth and ICT at the Republic of Rwanda to say a few welcome and introductory remarks. He's a man who's recognized as having quite a lot of energy and enthusiasm. Uh, before his career in government, he'd already achieved much in the ICT environment, uh, delivering award-winning mobile solutions. Uh, he pioneered and managed the organization that built the national portal and deployed web presence for dozens of public institutions in Rwanda. Uh, he's a key custodian of the Smart Africa Manifesto and also a key driver of uh, Rwanda's remarkable ICT story. Please welcome Jean-Philippe Nsengimana. Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much. Your Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda. Your Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda. Excellence, Monsieur le Président Blaise Compaoré, President du FASO, President du Conseil des Ministres. Excellence, Monsieur le Président Ali Bongo Ondimba, Président de la République du Gabon, Your Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya, Son Excellence, Monsieur Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, Président de la République du Mali, Excellence, Monsieur et Madame Représentants des chefs d'État et de gouvernement de l'Éthiopie, du Congo-Brazzaville et du Burundi. Excellencies, leaders of Rwanda's high institutions, Your Excellency, representative of the AU Commission, Chairperson, Broadband Commissioners for Digital Development, and Dr. Ture Hamadoun, Secretary General of ITU, Leaders of international organizations present here, UNCTAD, Commissar, and others, ministers and deputy ministers, leaders of delegations, chairmen, presidents, CEOs, and top executives of private sector companies, members of the diplomatic corps, leaders of institutions in the academia, civil society, private sector, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Today, a new chapter opens in the history of Africa's socioeconomic transformation. Again, we have come together from the four corners of our continent to make a historic statement that as far as information society is concerned, Africa is not playing a catch-up game. Africa wants to be in the leading league. We came together because we are confident that when we do, we indeed move history fast forward. We are together to declare the new era of a smart Africa, an Africa that leverages ICT to fast track its socio-economic transformation. An Africa whose men and women, boys and girls, young and old, urban and rural dwellers, regardless of income levels, education levels, profession, location, position, want and demand to be smart. Six years ago, Exactly on the same day of the 29th of October, we met in this very auditorium and we pledged that we are going to connect African citizens to the superhighways of information. 
At that time, Rwanda had less than 5% of mobile phone subscribers. Today we are 65% to be connected and growing. Broadband was still a dream. Today, Rwanda has deployed more than 5,000 kilometers of fiber, reaching every one of our 30 districts, connecting more than 500 government institutions and businesses, and continuing. We met and agreed that we are going to invest in high quality ICT education and, our, and uh, extend our people, extend digital literacy to all our people. Today, Rwanda is the home to the CMU that is here for all of us to send our young people to access world-class research and education. Over the last six years, we've expanded and deepened ICT access, affordability, and usage. As we speak now, ICT is saving lives, educating our future generation, empowering our farmers, allowing governments to deliver, our, allowing our government to deliver a great experience to our citizens and businesses. I will give one example of the one laptop per child that has put laptops in more than 200,000 hands in our, uh, uh, that ha has put laptops in the hands of more than 200,000 kids in more than 400 primary schools. We are privileged to have again come together. More than 1,500 delegates coming from more than 75 countries, ministerial delegations, broadband commissioners, and other dignitaries. We've got representation from the top ICT industry. In this room, we have representatives from Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Cisco, IBM, SAP, KT, Samsung, MTN, Airtel, Millicom, Liquid, many companies, and I can't list them all. Overall, We are here to define the future, to look forward and fast track that future. That's why we have chosen this motto, the future delivered today. I'd like to apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I should have recognized His Excellency Salva Ki Mayardit, President of the Republic of South Sudan, Your Excellency, Mr. President, you are very welcome. It is now my pleasure to welcome you all to Transform Africa. I wish you a very pleasant time in Kigali. I wish you to enjoy uh, as we dream about a better future that our people expect from us. Thank you, uh, excellencies and distinguished participants. Uh, Minister, thank you very much indeed uh, for sharing your thoughts with us and indeed, uh, I guess, s s setting a story of success uh, that is Rwanda, um, perhaps a blueprint that a lot of our other territories can follow. Uh, the successes have had a real impact, as you said, uh, on the lives of people in a meaningful way, be it through health, education as an example, and uh, we certainly look forward to conversation uh, with our excellencies here, how we can roll this out right across the continent. So, uh, Minister Nsengimana, thank you very much indeed for your introductory remarks and sharing your thoughts with us this day.
Um, I said this yesterday, and it's true. When we talk about uh, ICTs, broadband, and this whole arena, there's a man that really doesn't need that much uh, introduction. When it comes to broadband and connectivity, uh, he's a man, I'm sure that you'll agree, he's uh, very passionate and enthusiastic and optimistic about Africa's uh, journey going forward. Uh, he's been an anchor in our journey so far, actively promoting initiatives such as the Connect Africa Summit uh, 2007, which, uh, as you've heard, proved to be a good vehicle, a great vehicle, in fact, for some of the progress that we've seen and enjoyed and uh, much of the investment flows that we've seen coming into our countries. Uh, well, to talk to us more about the path to transforming Africa, please welcome once again the ITU Secretary General, Dr. Amadou Touré. Mr. President, Paul Kagame, President of Republic of Rwanda, Your Excellency, Yuri, Yuri Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda, Son Excellence, the President Blaise Compaoré, President du FASO, President du Conseil des Ministres, Your Excellency, uh, je dirais en français plutôt, uh, Son Excellence, le Président Ali Bongo Ondimba, Président de la République du Gabon, Your Excellency, Silva Kir Mayardit, <coughs> President of South Sudan, Your Excellency, Uhuru Kenyatta, President of Mali, <laughs> eh, President of Kenya. Okay. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> They're sitting next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> you see, <laughs> it, it, it was a good wish, so. Je crois que mon frère, le président Iveka, va bien vouloir m'excuser pour ce lapsus, mais c'était une bonne intention. C'est l'excellence, le président Boubacar. Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, President of the Republic of Mali, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to be here today, exactly six years after we first met here in Kigali for Connect Africa. And I would like to pay special tribute to President Blaise Compaore, he among the seven presidents uh, here present today, he was with President Kagame uh, here back in 2006, uh, 2007. Please give him a, a round of applause. <laughs> it is my honor today to present to you also the manifesto, the Smart Africa Manifesto that your ministers have discussed here. The manifesto sets the vision for transforming Africa with the power of ICTs and embodies commitments to achieve such a vision. Outcomes of ITU Connect Africa Summit 2007 did set out a vision for Africa. We can be proud that we will have largely achieved this goal. Now is the time for a new vision. Time to move from mobile revolution to broadband revolution. Time to ensure that Africa is a full member of the knowledge society, where today in the information society, our ultimate goal is a knowledge society where every citizen of this planet has access to information, can use information, create inform can cre cre and you can use information, create information, and share it. Those are the four prerequisites that will take us to the knowledge society that you, our leaders, are dreaming for us. Now is the time for the new vision. Time to ensure that Africa is a full member of this society. Time to move from connect to transform. Transform our businesses, transform our jobs, our lifestyle, transform education, healthcare, government, and cities. Setting such a vision requires a combination of two key elements. First, 
learning from the best experiences and practices internationally. In this regard, our Broadband Commission for Digital Development, co-chaired by President Kagame, has been providing strong guidance for the development of ICT, especially broadband. Mr. President, President Kagame, I would like to share a secret with you here. We at the Broadband Commission call you the digital president. <laughs> if we are digital citizens today, you are a digital president. And in fact, you are surrounded today by six other digital presidents. We are proud of you. In the most recent report of the State of the Broadband uh, 2013, which I presented to the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, on 20th of September this year, sets out a number of policy recommendations. Commission has also set out ways in which broadband could and should contribute to economic, social, and environmentally sustainable development. It has also outlined ambitious targets for broadband development. These targets, lessons, and guidance clearly apply to Africa. There is also an important second element, local expertise and local leadership. International organizations, including ITU, will support and continue to accompany you in your developmental path. However, don't be mistaken. Only Africans can develop Africa. Only Africans can make sure that our native continent seizes opportunities of ICTs. Only we can transform Africa. And we are doing that today here in Kigali. For that, we need clear strategy and clear plan and a clear vision from our leaders. Hope, we, we hope it is not just a strategy. It is a plan that will work. This is further demonstrated by the research conducted under the ages of our broadband commission, which proved that broadband plans deliver tangible results. In this regard, the manifesto provides a basis for such plans, not just for one country, but for the entire continent of ours. Your presence and leadership make me very confident and optimistic that together we can and will achieve this, this vision of a smart Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, Smart Africa is a bold and innovative commitment to accelerate sustainable socio-economic development on the continent, ushering Africa into a knowledge economy through affordable access to broadband and usage of information and communication technologies. Smart Africa's commitment relies on the following key principles. Principle one puts ICT at the center of our national socio-economic development agendas. We will facilitate innovation and the creation of content and applications that are context appropriate, development oriented, and scalable to deliver social and economic benefits in education, healthcare, business, agriculture, and other key sectors. We will also develop the capacity of our people to utilize ICT and be fully empowered participants of the ICT driven economy and society. As per principle two, we will improve access to ICT, especially broadband. Public-private sector partnership will be crucial in, ach in achieving this. Investment will be supported by enabling policy environment. And the presence of 1,500 business people here in this room is a testimony of their commitment to do that. Principle three calls for improved accountability, efficiency, and openness through ICT e-government services and open data initiatives will play a crucial role in achieving this goal. Principle four recognizes that economic transformation must be private sector driven. Therefore, we will foster an enabling environment for private investment to drive job creation, productivity, and competitiveness supported by technology and innovation. We will especially support efforts aimed at turning our continent from being largely a passive consumer to a producer of ICTs. And finally, principle five aims to leverage ICT to promote sustainable development, including promoting social inclusion, especially the youth and people with disabilities and gender equality. 
I must tell you, yesterday I attended the forum of the youth innovate, young innovators here, and I was very much impressed by their leadership. The future leaders of this continent are ready to take over when the time comes. And it is good to know that there is hope. There is hope for this continent. Technology needs to become more cost effective and protected in order to ensure sustainable achievements. We will therefore embrace suitable innovations in the field of cybersecurity, cloud computing, mobility, shared infrastructure, and shared services. I am particularly proud that Manifesto is not just a vision. It also sets out clear measures to ensure that it is implemented. This is the kind of tangible leadership that Africa needs. Implementation of this vision will also be supported by an ICT capacity development fund. This fund will aim to develop skills of our people to be not only users, but active participants and contributors to the ICT-driven development. I invite you to contribute to this fund. Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday during my speech, I described three types of leaders. I always say that the leader's job is easy, is to dream and dream big for their people. But there are three types of leaders, the ones that will dream something big and wake up in sweat. It was too big. There are some leaders who would simply go back to sleep, saying, oh, it was just a dream. And there are leaders who would wake up and share that dream with their people, and it becomes a vision. And today here, we have seven presidents who dare to dream and dream big for their people. And thank you for coming, Mr. President. Of course, uh, sometimes our presidents uh, are so busy by all those internal problems that they don't even have time to sleep. So I don't know when they're going to dream. <laughs> so we have, we have to give them time to dream a little bit. I'm also very proud to see that all stakeholders, including governments, private sector, and development partners, come to set the vision and commit to achieve its implementation. The Smart Africa Manifesto is a good example of committed and visionary leadership, which is key to ensuring that ICT-driven Africa will be a place where people prosper, communities enjoy strong bonds, businesses strive, and governments enable strong and sustainable development as well as efficiency, eff efficiently and effectively serve their people. I would like to invite you, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, Excellencies, to endorse this manifesto so we put it in action. Thank you very much. Thank you.